And now it gives me uh, immense pleasure to invite uh, our Honorable uh, Minister uh, Michael Tavolo. Uh, Honorable Michael Tavolo is Ontario's Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addiction. He is a distinguished lawyer with over 30 years of experience. Michael is passionate about community development with his strong leadership on many initiatives, such as creation of Italian Heritage Month in Canada, initiating the Festival of Lights, celebrating the cultural diversity in the city of Vaughan. Um, Michael is a regular guest lecturer, mentor, a motivational speaker at universities, not-for-profit organizations, and community gathering, and, and, and a great friend of Canada India Foundation, and we are very proud to have you, sir. Over to you. Greetings, everyone. Uh, it is truly an honor for me to be at your inaugural uh, um, seminar this morning to to, to speak about uh, uh, health and and uh, healthcare. And I, I'd like to um, welcome the Council General, uh, uh, Sir Vastava. I have not met uh, uh, you as yet, but I look forward to meeting you uh, soon. And doctors and Asari. Uh, Bagel, Trivedi, and Verma. Uh, uh, this is uh, obviously for me something very important. I'm the first minister that's ever been named uh, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions in the province of Ontario. And I think that is significant because mental health really is the basis of all health. You can't be healthy unless you have mental health. And for me, one of the first things that I learned in my uh, work and my background is that we need to do more to look at unique ways to do work uh, in the area of uh, mental health. Earlier, uh, it was discussed the bio biomedical model and how the biomedical model really restricts the views of how to help individuals and looking at the more biopsychosocial model and the importance of not just the, 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 the medical side, but also understanding the psychological side and the social side is extremely important when we deal with mental health. Um, you know, the statistics in the world, and I, I, I don't want to uh, rhyme off a lot of statistics, but I think it's important to understand just how significant mental health is. There's someone in the, on the planet every 40 seconds committing suicide. In Canada, we have similar statistics in terms of the number of people that are, um, that are dying as a result of suicide. I, I believe it's four a day. Um, there are a lot of issues that affect and impact on individuals. And we have developed in the West a system of helping individuals with mental health issues that's really based on an individualistic society, um, that an individual, and it's focused on the individual. So all the therapies are, are, are taught that way. And of course, that impacts on how we deal with people that don't come from individualistic societies. And that includes, you know, collectivist societies such as the Italians, the um, South Asian, the Chinese, the, the Asian communities. So we need to do more to understand how to incorporate um, different philosophies that um, really truly work. Um, of course, being doctors, uh, most of you understand, or all of you understand the significance of uh, evidence-based uh, practices in order to ensure that there's a measured outcome that we can look at and determine if what we're doing is correct and whether we should be expanding what we're doing so that it's uh, shared with other individuals. And we have experiences in Canada with our Indigenous communities because a lot of the work that they do is spiritual based. And it, it, to me, to hear people talking about spirituality as a component of healing is extremely important because without that spiritual component, there never will be healing. That's one of the things that I learned early on in the work that I did. In addition to being a lawyer, I'm a, a certified addictions counselor and I work with individuals. I've worked uh, previously with individuals that uh, had addiction issues and it's the reason I came to government for it's the recognition that we need to have a holistic integrated approach that's client-centered that means looking at the needs of the individual and understanding his or her needs and providing the supports and services as a government to assist. And as, as far as I'm concerned and as far as my government uh, is concerned, we're not looking at restricting our views to a very narrow field. We're interested in looking at other alternatives that are being used around the world. We're looking at the teachings of uh, and, and development of uh, work that's been done in other countries to see what and how 
they can be incorporated into the work we're doing in the province. We just recently launched a program or a, a foundational document called the Roadmap to Wellness, a strategy for the mental health and addictions for individuals in the province of Ontario. The document is based on a lifespan model. It's based on understanding what the needs are for a child prenatal, uh, uh, the first 12 years of life, 12 to 24, and so on, all the way to senior, you know, to, to, to becoming a senior, um, so from 65 until death. What needs and supports do we need to put in place? Because they change depending on where you are in your lifespan. We also wanted to make sure that we built a step care model that provided supports and services across the province of Ontario. Um, to give you an idea, we're roughly the size of uh, Germany and France combined with 14 and a half million people. So it's not easy to deliver services in, in remote areas around the province of Ontario, but still we need to find a way to build a model. And the most important part of the model for me and for how the model is being developed is to look at services that are culturally sensitive to the needs of the individuals. So listening to all of you this morning, I'm delighted to be part of this and to listen and to learn. Because again, there are elements that are extremely important uh, for us to incorporate into our um, uh, system of mental health and uh, um, working with individuals with addictions. And uh, again, from my standpoint, uh, I want to thank the Canada India Foundation. They've been doing incredible work in the province of Ontario. I'm proud to be friends with Ritesh and uh, with, with everyone at the foundation. And uh, obviously for us, it's very important that we maintain these relationships and learn from each other and build a system that's really um, effective and provide services that are centered on the needs of the individual. I just wanted to finish off with uh, a quote that I, I've always sort of kept in my back pocket uh, from Thomas Edison. It says that the doctor of, future, of the future will not give medicine, but will instruct his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. And I think that's what you're embarking on here today. And I appreciate the hard work of all of you. And uh, hopefully I can be kept uh, in, in, uh, um, in tune so that we can collaborate further between the province of Ontario and uh, the government of India. So I, I thank you for, for this important work and uh, your continued efforts. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Minister, for your very encouraging uh, thoughts. And uh, we are delighted uh, uh, to uh, partner with you and engage uh, uh, with yourself to have this discussion uh, going. As we all know that healthcare budgets are limited and what yoga and Ayurveda offer is a holistic uh, solution, more on the preventative base as well as for the disease management side. And the cost is only fractions because as uh, we all know that Ayurveda focuses on uh, your food uh, for the body, for the mind and for the soul. So giving a whole uh, holistic approach to your nourishment and your upliftment and energy. So we're looking forward to working very closely on this initiative. Thank you so very much for joining. Mm -hmm.